Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you in any corner of uh, the planet. Three years ago, on the 3rd December 2020, we were here in the same site of uh, CECIC, my home, announcing the opening of uh, the process to get uh, the International Year of Glass 2022 from uh, United Nations. It was uh, a very, very long way. Remember, we were in, in the pandemic, uh, but uh, it uh, finished with the approval by unanimity by the General Assembly of United Nations of uh, the International Year of Glass 2022 on the 18 May 2021. We have worked uh, very, very hard, uh, really, from 96 uh, countries all over the planet, including all the protagonists, science, technology, industry, education, and uh, an incredible number of uh, glass artists and museums. Thousands of activities have been developed in 2022, and they continue happening. The IJOC finished in December 2022, but now we are running the age of glass. We have prepared this uh, video, dramatic video of uh, 17 minutes, to recreate uh, the atmosphere that uh, we lived, really, in last December, the 14th of December, in the uh, session that uh, we organized uh, uh, in the General Assembly of uh, United Nations in uh, New York. It showcases uh, uh, and demonstrates, show the many international year of class uh, activities and events, uh, particular do those uh, that were focused in uh, getting the uh, objectives the, of uh, a sustainable development of the Agenda 2030. A voiceover links an uh, uh, amazing image and provide a context, really, that makes the puzzle whole. I invite you to look the uh, video and uh, to disseminate it uh, as wide as possible in your websites, uh, in your institutions, and, uh, of course, uh, it will be uploaded in the website of uh, IJOC. This video uh, this YouTube video of, uh, will remain in the website of SESIC, uh, the Spanish Research Council, ready to be downloaded and uh, looked uh, and seen for many, many years. Enjoy the video and welcome to the Age of Glass. Our 2022 International Year of Glass began in Geneva. 140 international guests gathered for two days in February to hear 30 inspirational speakers highlight the varied roles glass has in our lives. 7,000 listened online. Thousands of events enjoyed by millions followed. The journey concluded in December in Japan with a conference on how glass and materials help to create sustainable societies. A week later, the IOG organizing committee arrived at the UN headquarters in New York to summarize the overwhelmingly positive outcomes from UN sponsorship, so many aligned with their 2030 goals. Yes, John, it's been some time since we all met at the United Nations headquarters in New York, and I'm delighted to have this opportunity to recreate the magic of that occasion. We focused on activities supporting the UN 2030 goals on equality, inclusive, lifelong quality education, gender equality, empowering women and girls, and reducing inequality within and between countries.
Let's begin with our celebratory book. Welcome to the Glass Age. 13 chapters and 132 pages. The Spanish Research Council printed it for the opening ceremony in Geneva. It's quite weighty. 624 grams, in fact. But it targets teenagers. Lots of pictures. Not too much text. Free downloads. Wherever, whoever you are. There are English and Spanish translations. And we hope for more. Oh, eight of the 18 authors are female. And it wasn't the only book written for the International Year of Glass. But books were only part of the year. Posters in Spanish and English were created for two major exhibitions in Spain. One based around the Welcome to the Glass Age book, and a second on sustainability, structured for various student age groups. Many journals published special issues focused on the International Year of Glass. IOG also supported tens of conferences and hundreds of talks across the world for all age groups. And for those who couldn't attend? Well, COVID had already pushed communications online using the Wordle's optical glass fibre networks. So, many events were free, accessible globally, recorded for posterity, and included a diverse mix of presenters. Audiences were all genders, all ages, both privileged and underprivileged, from the north, south, east and west, in spite of time differences. The UK Stained Glass Society opened its prestigious prize to international competition for IOC. We hope such opportunities will grow. ICG's Education Committee already has short international schools for new graduates. The novel course at Albright, shown in the video, concerns new teaching techniques and has an IO grant to grow international participation. Impressive. But what's next on the equality front? Where do skills fit in? What about inspiring those who struggle for access? Female glassblowers with allegedly insufficient lung power. Younger children. So much has included younger participants. Free microscopes for primary schools in the UK. School computers in exchange for recycled bottles in the Philippines. Poetry and essay writing competitions on sustainability in India. Just two of the 26 educational projects we helped finance. Even in richer countries, children are enthralled by glassblowing. We part financed 86 projects. Another was the twinning of Spanish towns with glassmaking connections. 50 cities and towns joined to promote glass and glass recycling.
and gender equality. The glass ceiling is an excellent metaphor for the difficulties and obstacles women in R&D and in industry face in achieving positions of power. Things are slowly changing though, with dedicated issues of journals for female researchers and company networks. Thinking about skills, let's talk to Andrew about art. Thank you very much, Mary and John, for sharing the many efforts to communicate the science and technology of glass so widely. Glass art has also been a key focus of the International Year of Glass, and artists have worked hard to share with the wider public the dynamic and theatrical process of glass blowing and shaping. Indeed, these were not only demonstrated, but members of the public were given the opportunity to try it themselves, and some of these activities were documented on video. Yo llegué aquí un poco por casualidad, porque la fábrica estaba en ruina, entonces había un proyecto de restauración y dentro del proyecto de restauración del edificio se inició una famosa escuela taller del vidrio. Eh, los primeros pasos les di con María Ángeles. Al final ella era la mejor profesora que ha podido tener este centro porque sabía transmitirte, transmitirte con, con esa alegría, con esa pasión que uno vive el vidrio. A partir de mediados de los años 50 se han empezado a introducir las, las mujeres. Tenemos muchas mujeres. Es cierto que en todas las escuelas eh, que han pasado por aquí tenemos un montón de mujeres. Es una cosa curiosa porque de ser un oficio de hombres ha pasado a que la mujer se va incorporando y tiene las mismas capacidades que el hombre. Son muy buenas son más capaces de, de ver lo que nosotros no vemos. Ya no se ve eh, con reticencia que una mujer sople. Gracias a las nuevas tecnologías y al avance social, el vidrio está abierto ahora a todo el mundo. El futuro del, del soplado de vidrio cada vez eh, es, es más fuerte. Principalmente que el vidrio es un mundo apasionante. Es donde va a, a poder expresarse es donde va a poder dar vida a un ser inerte como que es el vidrio. Animaría a cualquiera que se apuntara a la escuela y si quieres formarte y tener una pasión tan grande que te lleve y que tengas esa fuerza como para que sea tu vida, tendrías que venir a la escuela. The International Year of Glass saw industrial sponsors help to make possible almost 30 glass festivals around the world. Because so many of these regular events had to be postponed during the COVID pandemic, the opportunity to hold these celebrations of glass once again created a fantastic buzz and boosted attendance. Let's hear Janine Christley talking about the UK Glass Biennale, an international festival of glass and watch a video of a glass garden at the UK Chelsea Flower Show. Hello, my name is Janine Chrisley, and I'm director of the International Festival of Glass in the UK. We were so pleased to be part of the UN International Year of Glass and to welcome Elisa Duran and John Parker to come and open the event for us. The festival represented over 500 international artists and we had over 10,000 visitors. The festival focus this year was on Japan, China and Korea and we had some amazing artists come and join us to run masterclasses, workshops and presentations. We had our first major exhibition of East Asian glass alongside the British Glass Biennale exhibition which showcases the best of UK base makers. It was a wonderful event and people were so excited to be back together after three years away. We want to thank the UN for recognising this year and for recognising the beauty of the magic of glass. Thank you. During the International Year of Glass, artists, technologists, and scientists seized the opportunity to share ideas, experiences, and questions around sustainability, a critical topic on the United Nations agenda, and one that was given special emphasis. The International Year of Glass's international stage was also a forum for concerns such as the preservation and importance of heritage, both physical glass landmarks and the centuries of learned skills that are under threat due to shifts in glass production. 
Let's look at the results of an international collaboration to restore ancient glass treasures shattered in the 2020 chemical explosion in Beirut. Amazingly, thanks to training programs, numerous Lebanese have learned glassworking skills in restoring these treasures. We must also make note of the Worldwide Mosaics for Afghan Women project, in which sections of glass mosaics, based on the designs of traditional Afghan patterns, are being stitched into a mosaic scarf to preserve this cultural heritage. The scars and nicks produced by glass cuts received during the process became almost a badge of honor. Italy is an excellence recognized worldwide for its millennial tradition in glass processing and manufacturing. The Italian glass culture has deep roots, dating back to thousands of years ago, when the ancient Romans developed new techniques, contributing firsthand to the history of its processing. The tradition of glass has been going on and developed to the present day until the proclamation of 2022 as the International Year of Glass by the United Nations. In this context, Vitra promoted the project during the meetings of the Community of Glass Associations and launched the event during Vitrum 2021. Italy celebrated the International Year of Glass with the Italian Glass Weeks which has been held between Milan and Venice from 10 to the 25th of September 2022. With its 300 events and over 450,000 visitors, the event recorded a great success and attracted the public's attention on the Italian glass industry and its excellence. The show featured a multitude of events, workshops and laboratories for kids and adults lessons and demonstrations, conferences, shows and installations, tours to museums with glass-skilled experts, evening events and parties. But this is only the beginning. Vitrum 2023, major sponsor of the International Year of Glass, awaits you in Milan between 5 and the 8th of September 2023 along with the Glass Week. The International Year of Glass held a closing ceremony in Japan that included the unveiling of the seven glass wonders of the world, as identified by a panel of experts. Let's see what they came up with. And we extended the New York event by parading outside into the cold December air after the proceedings to see and appreciate the evocative artwork Wildfire by artist Natalie Tyler, which was placed in the UN grounds for a month and reminded us all of the significance of climate change. Which brings us to the topic of those who made the 2021 International Year of Glass possible. It's critical that we thank all those whose time and financial contributions made this amazing program possible and whose images enrich the presentation. Mm -hmm.